it's Wednesday, October 26, 2022. Um, in my quiet solitude, I'm paying attention to what the humans are or what the wizarding community in this witch hunt um, is up to. And like a switch witch, um, I'm like, I'm watching. And now, when I was younger, there was something called Looney Tunes. Warner Brothers brought it out, I believe. Warner being the W-A-R for the men's warehouse or warehouse. Um, so I would assume, because it spells and go spell it the correct way for who's leading this war and this charge. Um, so, and I like, I, again, I remember a hole in time and space where somebody actually explained to me their position in the world. And he said, what I'm frightened of for you as a daughter of many things for which you are frightfully unaware is to put it in Brady Bunch terms, God forbid somebody thinks that you are a ball that was fumbled and then tries to pick it up and run with it. That's where my fear is. So at God, country, and family for heartfelt messages and however that worked or however it happened in a whatever, whatever, whatever unexplainable way considering there is deep space. There is a time where the world stands still and some of us exist outside of human, human outside of humanity and where we wake up in our daily whatever. Um, and that's the spiritual and the surreal realm work of truism. Um, altruistic, altruistic as it is. Um, so going back to an international caller program the local, regional, and long-distance carrier being incredibly important for one level of conversation at Patriotic and a job to do regardless of what they call you or where they put you or land, air, or sea on that one. Um, so... I'm watching, I, in my life frame, the cartoon of this Warner Brothers from what I'll say is the men's war, war house or modern warfare, because uh, it was on a television and I had limited access. Uh, but uh, the Gunders, Judy all, Judith always had a notepad and a pencil since I did not know how to write in their local script that I was born to just yet before I entered school. So watching this cartoon, there was something referred to as Coochie Coo with a baby. They'd say Coochie Coochie Coo. Like it was like some <laughs> frightening uh, with a baby in the, and it was, very mild and very masked in its whatever, in its presentation. I'm sitting here years later and woven into my fabric of consciousness from when I was a youth, um, just born to the big apple, um, on uh, Saturday, I think it was episode E43, they put up what a coochie looks like. Now, I've heard amongst what refers to itself as African-American, I've heard 
some of their Def Jam comics um, refer to this word as a slang reference to a body part on a specific person, which I don't want to go into because, again, I am trying to remain when I speak for this, for this particular whatever, like Sister Act in the movie from 1992 with Whoopi Goldberg and whoever else was in that, that cast of nuns in a convent trying to be respectable. However, knowing that the words were spoken by Def Jam Comics, they refer to themselves as African American. They are not in my genetic family of whatever, but I've heard them say this word just in a derogatory way to refer to a woman and her body part, whatever that means. That thread of consciousness and awareness and reality, along with the Warner Brothers, which made no sense, because it was referring to a baby and then chasing that line of reality in some criminology, higher thought pattern and process of what could be going on. I'm thinking I'm watching this episode. It's CBS Saturday morning, E43, and they put on a chef and they put, and his name is Coochie. And it's a male as a reference, which I will reference that. And then the word coup is usually some form of stage, episodic, whatever to overthrow a government. Again, I don't know where in the world it's relevant, but it's being portrayed and displayed between the African American community in Def Jam and their entertaining way of making sure the adult audiences know this word coochie. And then I have a very real face on the dish and what the chef looks like on this one particular episodic program where they're alerting the public whether they're able or capable of pick picking up on these small nuances, especially since I'm stuck in the field in New York with nothing better to do, but to watch the signs from the wind and the wind instruments in some orchestrated effort to I don't know what. So here we are. So it's called The Dish. On The Dish this morning, Justin Cucci raised in a legendary New York... Now, again, that is the man's name. I've heard his name used in open, comedic, protected, free speech that they've also put on television before. While I'm out in the field, I am not around people that use such language so loosely and so foully in front of my face until 1975 Tia Frio came around. And then it was a completely different set of prowess and linguistical allowance for which I did not give complied consent. However, being out of the control of like getting to choose and have free will because the Americans are conducting themselves in such ill manner. And he's like toilet paper stuck to my shoe that I can't even get off. New York restaurant from childhood. Coochie spent time overseas, then down south, before settling in Denver, where his food and restaurant locations have brought him plenty of attention. Now, 
I've seen such a person in my life frame refer to himself if um, I, the other, um, earlier in this program, um, they had, or on a different episode, which I made note of on my YouTube, there is a word for a specific eight candle um, piece of equipment or utility that a certain word uses in their practice of spirituality and in a book that I cannot read because I don't know Greek or Hebrew. I was never taught. Um, not to say that my elders, I mean, my grandfather knew a whole lot more than his granddaughter. There was information withheld for some reason, teachings that were not given in this particular area of North America. I don't know why. Um, but intelligence being whatever it was, there's been a lot of withholding of learning of language and ability to fend for oneself naturally amongst this time frame in this area for my person. I saw one of the people that's still one actually one of the only humans that I came in contact with around the cheerleading event and whatever was going on there at diocese level that had a higher up come visit. There was a teacher in that particular part of my, my education and life frame, who is still allowed, that he's on my algorithm, however that works for the MaxiPad internet, um, on my Facebook account. He's known me since I was a teenager. Not much has changed except a whole lot of being hurt more. Um, so he put up, yesterday something about uh he put up some private uh well public message that got tied to my algorithm which i saw whatever that message was whoever he is um but that was where my high school jacket was stolen um off my person or However, it was taken um, in things that I have very little memory of. I just know it disappeared. Um, so he said a specific word yesterday, and now I've heard it, but I've heard it used in good context and bad context, and I'm not really clear. Um, so... This thread of reality with a face to the name and the reference in the local entertainers for local, regional, long distance with international carriers being I don't know whom because they're labeling themselves all sorts of like they like in their umbrella of reality for. I mean, like, there's so much education and cross, like, I mean, it's, and then they claim these really, like, words, like, Kanye West is now, he said some anti-Semitic things. I don't follow. I don't follow him. I don't follow his rhetoric. I don't follow his problems. I don't follow his words. He's an entertainer. He's paid for by I don't know what. It's, like, sponsored confusion is what I feel like. But they take the hits and now he's no longer a billionaire. Okay, so now got it. That's, but that was the, whatever he was hired for. Um, so now I'm watching uh, CBS this morning and there's two things. One is the um, person uh, that's on one of the women She's in this group and it's all, they all look the same or within a close range of one another. And they climbed Kilimanjaro. She didn't. 
uh, Nate is in there as well. And he says something, key up word, buzzword is point. And then uh, they're missing vanilla. In plain manila or, oh, they said vanilla. Right. Now, is that a crescent reference with French vanilla? I'm just curious because, again, that was one set of operatives I was with in whatever type of education system was going on in New York within my life frame when certain things happened. That was a different operation um, where something that happened in the place that took the jacket, something else happened the following year in my senior year of high school. Again, field day and the color they wrapped me in for diploma. That's one set of circumstances. And then the moving me to the cheerleading squad. That was a different set of, I mean, they're always red, white, and blue, but it's a different go big, whatever. Um, so it gets really confusing as to what the locals were trying to get participation in and what it actually means while all this bigger stuff's going on and it really does affect safety. So this morning being Wednesday, October 26, it's CBS E213. something now that you've never even thought about doing and will probably never do. Do you know what you do? Summit of Mount Kilimanjaro. And the question is, how many made it to the top? That's a tease question. And guys, you have to say something to Nate because he said, what's the point with a tease? <laughs> and Tony's here because Nate said we need some vanilla in this picture. That's right. Right back. Okay, so that happened. Um, but earlier in this particular episode, they also have on a woman who's calling herself a rabbi. Um, she's commenting on the Kanye West thing with the anti-Semitic word, which I'm like frightfully distal from. I don't want to get proximal on it. Um, however, it's confusing because now in my life frame and my experiential introduction uh, in respectful um, mixed um, setting, there was a time where some of the children I went to, um, I guess it would be middle school or it would be junior high is what they called it, um, they started going through something called bar and bat mitzvahs. I had no idea what that was. Again, at the time, on Sunday, I would go to wherever. We didn't talk about it because we were on our private weekends. Um, they didn't talk about where they went. But there were these large parties that their parents put on for them. And they had this rite of passage of some sort. And they invited, I was, I was, I was lucky enough to be personally invited in to join them in their celebration for this one time event. So, uh, and these were the country club kids, uh, is what I call them, um, because they had far more money than Lewis and, um, and I did, or Lewis did their parents. I don't know what they did for a living. But we went to the same set of rooms together for a while. Um, and I don't know any of them now, personally. I mean, they just ghosted me in the field. It was like, I don't know, whatever. So um, when their rite of passage came, they invited me in. I went. They spoke a foreign tongue I did not know um, during these ceremonies. Uh, and then... And they were not all taking place in the same room. Some of them had different buildings that they worshipped in. I don't know the difference. I Really, I don't. They invited me to several. I went to several. Whoever it was, 
I honored them in the way that they were teaching us was respectful to honor them. Uh, but there was instruction of an invitation as well. Um, so, uh, and there, there was in their country club, there in their country club differences. I don't know words to describe. I don't have any of that. And I would, wouldn't say if I did, but it was, they, they looked a certain way, um, in whatever their efforts were, whatever their parents were, I don't know. Um, but they each had their own roof and house of worship. They spoke, I couldn't decipher the word difference between any of them. I didn't understand when I was there. I just sat quietly and admired the artistic displays inside of the building since I couldn't understand the words. Um, and I tried to watch the ceremony to be respectful in that moment. Um, but they did not all congregate in the same, under the same roof and in the same building. There were differences, whatever they were, I don't know. Um, but it led me to believe that there are just like in a, Christian way of a Catholic and Episcopal or Presbyterian or whatever the vernacular is for those, the community, the Jewish community had something along the same lines. I just don't know their particulars because I wasn't taught it. Um, invited in to respectfully observe, but that was it. Um, so that's how I grew up with a respectful tolerance and a visual understanding of what was present where I was, where we were growing up, what I would say safely or as safe as possible, um, each day congregating in a, a centralized school. They called it a public school, but again, I, some people say it's like an Ivy League public school. Um, so it was a different way than some of the other humans I've met, like Tiafru and Romer. They had a different level of education system. And um, I don't know whatever their purpose was um, designated in the local fields. I'm not sure. Um, but this morning, I see something called a rabbi. Um, and she looks like a different country um, of origin completely. And she is uh, under this, la using this label of Jewish as well, which gets very confusing for me because that is not what was taught to me when I was younger in this area of New York. I don't know if it goes on in other areas of the country, but that's again where the local, regional, and long distance telephone and telephone carrier is so crucial for national security for which I feel like mine has been horribly damaged and I don't know why. It's just a feeling I get and I don't know how to correct it or fix it. And then there's with international calling whether it be calling out, calling in, whether it be ch like transport, whether it be shipping and containment issues, I'm not quite sure. It seems to be an integrated escalating concern of mine. And then I have these groups, it would appear, that have some backing to them, whether it be ITF, like International Trade Federation, whether it be FCC the or the Federal Communications, whatever. I mean, it gets really harrowing and harrowing in. And then they put on this morning, this Elizabeth Banks actress in some like paradox 
and she's teaching this whatever how to give abortions and her name is Elizabeth Banks and I'm like now is that a Miss Hannigan and the orphanage reference like because again I don't know who puts these things together and puts them up there but if I'm being penalized or held in some penal colony like whatever because the others are miscommunicating and like trying to excommunicate but they're all jumbled together in one message, which makes it really hard to decipher like who is good and bad in the situation with villains and the anti-villain or the hero, the anti-hero. I mean, it, it is like, and I know that people pay for all sorts of disgusting things. I have heard that before in passing. So now again... I don't know this Elizabeth Banks and teaching the kids how to make abort, how to do abortions, which is not necessarily, it's out of context because there's this one scene, which I'll show and it's not the whole movie, but in a paradox, para like sideways storyline, it could be relevant to what they're doing here on this mixed media message but then it looks like they're blackballing or excommunicating the wrong children that are stuck with no voice. So they're essentially stealing freedom from children that feel like they never even had a chance in this situation or their freedom's been taken by they don't even know what. We should also add that CBS News tried to contact Kanye West for comment, but we were unable to reach him at this time. Joining us now is Rabbi Angela Buchdahl. She's the senior rabbi at Central Synagogue right here in New York City. All right, and again, the bar mitzvahs and bat mitzvahs from where I was in a, the first series of rooms and their coming of age, their version of Jewish was very different than what she is portraying. This, at some level of national security, and then international calls, international trade, international funding, and keeping government and governance in some kind of peaceful alliance, and for growing a garden the correct way and having a future where you don't wake up and have to wonder if your health deterioration has something environmentally do with some kind of chemicals that may or may not be going off in the sewer system or the great system underground. I mean, I can see my face. This is just from breathing the air and drinking the water and not being, not having any other options getting out of here. But this free form of communication that they're doing I don't know how it's swaying the ability to keep chemical engineers from not wanting to destroy this level of ignorance or this level of participation that they feel is not needed for some reason. Rabbi Bukta, we're very glad you're here. You know, I've heard you say what he just said at the end of the piece that this is so much bigger than Kanye that we really should take the spotlight off of Kanye, but he does have a big platform. So right. we have to say something, don't you think? Well, it is much bigger than Kanye, but let's start with the fact that Kanye is big. Mm -hmm. um, just to put a little perspective on it, um, he has 30 million, over 30 million Twitter followers, which is more than double the population of all the Jews of the world. There are fewer than 15 million Jews in the world. I don't think so people realize that. I don't that. think people understand yeah. what a small community we are globally. Mm -hmm. And um, and yet, so one man having a platform that is twice as big as if every Jewish person in the world tried to reach someone, it still is not as big as his platform. Mm -hmm. So I think that we have to not underestimate what one person's platform could be. And if I go spell Jewish, Jewish, J-E means I, just like je suis in Jesus without an I, je suis, then there's je wish, W-I-S-H. If you go spell it at Mar Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, 
I am pretty sure under that there is a, um, there is a, what do they call it when you have a letter that represents and stands for something? There's an acronym where it is incredibly impertinent, but it is to a very small, limited few that know what this I don't know. I, I can't even use the word campaign any longer because now that has been. And what's really interesting is where um, the Def Jam used one particular group of people that was using the word on the street that it was dragged into with Di 1975, uh, they had a different, they had more of a Latin flavor or a Latin, Spanish, Latin, darker category, a uh, hybrid off of the, not the African Americans, but more South American, uh, Central American, perhaps. I don't really know where they, where they genderize themselves, but um, they were the ones who used the word in my physical space where I was just like, oh, I have heard that. I am not comfortable with that. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I don't, please don't use that in my presence. Um, and that's it. But it's so much bigger than that because it's also it's not just about one person. Right. It's also not just about anti-Semitism against Jews. He's essentially activated an army of people who hate and are serial haters. And, 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 and you know, evidence of that is just the clip we saw of the white supremacists. Um, mm -hmm. These are people who don't just hate Jews. They actually hate people of color, minorities, difference. Looking for any reason. Exactly. They hate somebody. Something. Right. So this is, um, when we tolerate that kind of language, um, it might go? start with hatred yeah, or conspiracy stop. theories of Jews, but it always extends to anyone who is of difference. I mean, uh, anti-Semitism is often called the world's oldest hatred, That's at right. least in recorded history. Yeah. Uh, where does it come from? Well, there are many roots. It's at least, you know, as, as long as there have been Jews, there has been hatred of Jews, unfortunately. Um, there has been, you know, the Christian church had a whole doctrine that was that was very explicitly anti-Semitic. Now, again, she's teaching this. I'm listening to it. I have not heard this version of history before, again, in the life frame that I've been within. They weren't teaching hate the Christian books that I have inside the books themselves are parodies and stories of uh, treating one another with kindness and fairness and so on and so forth. Like those are the teachings of it. Um, how they then took that and how maybe some groups have acted out of that. I, again, I don't know because I'm not in that level of knowing, but this is this, whatever that goes on in North America, which while, I mean, it, it doesn't, let's just put it this way at this point. Um, and that's, I guess why there's prosecution, something or other, um, where there is a, a level where they can decide whether they want to prosecute or not someone, because there is so much of this, back and forth in the swaying of or attempt to sway public opinion one way or the next to justify some, it feels like corporate and international trade relations. It feels like everybody's got their pieces on the field and they're incentivizing them to just fight for whatever. I, I don't have that. I haven't been paid. I don't have Opportunity. In fact, I've been quite the opposite. So it gets really confusing when I see all of them speaking and I never know what's the wind beneath their wings. It's, I don't know. I mean, what's their modus operandi? Again, I'm not clear. I don't know. Um, it's a very different approach to looking at the world, but it's just, it's what I've been handed. It's, I don't know how to like look at it any other way. Um, and I definitely don't want to be looked at like a fumbled football 
for just anybody to pick up and start carrying. There's supposed to be a very specific, I mean, when all of time, space, and the visual world is peeled away, there are creation stars where life and gas in the blackness of space and deep space and time exist on some theoretical board. And there's an exact preciseness. And then there's one star off in the distance, but equidistance to the first one. I have that with Alexander and someone else, which I perhaps am a, like, I don't know, like there's whatever's with that. So it is whatever it is in so-and-so and it's star one, nine, seven, eight, star eight, three, seven, eight, Nicole Ketteruz, it's earth. Solar system, Milky Way, universe, galaxy is broken, and it's Bayside Station, Bayside, New York, one one three six one.